Hi everyone, welcome to the inaugural episode of The Melting Pot. Every month we're going to come to you with the latest features, news and updates uh, with some example use cases and general discussions from uh, all about our customer service platforms for Microsoft Teams. My name's James, I'm Luwe's VP of Customer Success and I'm joined by Alex. Hi everyone, I'm Alex, I'm Luwe's VP of uh, Cloud Products and uh, yeah, quite excited to be here today even though I'm a bit sad this pot is actually empty, there's no cheese in it. Yeah, I think we're going to need to sort that out for next yeah. time. Uh, so great, Th uh, thanks for joining us Alex and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, before we get into it really, we're talking about the um, Nimbus suite, right? So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, Alex, could you just give us like the elevator pitch as to what Nimbus is? Sure, Nimbus in a nutshell. <laughs> Think I, uh, yeah, I think I've rehearsed that one well, let's see. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, Nimbus is our cloud native uh, customer service solution for Microsoft Teams. Yep. It's fully built in Microsoft Azure on a microservice architecture, quite exciting stuff. I don't understand half of it. But. So um, it's uh, integrated into Microsoft Teams natively with the Graph API. Okay. Um, we've got connectors to Power Automate and to Microsoft Power BI to basically yeah, integrate it with all your uh, business tools and everything. So um, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And uh, also, we recently uh, released our attendant console, which uh, is uh, using Nimbus as a base uh, and basically seamlessly yeah, integrates into the whole thing. For the receptionist, right? To transfer yeah, exactly. calls. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait to get into a lot more of those features, particularly the Power Automate stuff. I think we should do some sessions uh, in further episodes of the Melting Pot about that one and go, go into a bit more detail. Sounds good. Um, so, we had a really exciting big release last week. Um, lots of new stuff came. Um, so we're just going to take sort of top three of those of those new features. So I understand that Nimbus can now talk multiple different languages. Could you tell us a bit about that? Sure thing. It's actually from for me, for myself. It's quite an exciting feature because I'm not a native speaker. So I'm quite... you wouldn't have guessed. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So it obviously speaks German now, but yeah. among that, it also speaks Italian, French, and Dutch, uh, and obviously English as it, as it did from the outset. For okay. us, that's quite a big step because obviously got quite a lot of customers around the globe already, 150. And I was just going to say, how many different countries are we, uh, are we uh, talking 15, about? 15, right I think. It's That's growing by the, by the day, so yeah. <laughs> okay, and the, the, the technology that the, the, the guys that build this stuff use to, to do that is quite interesting, I think. So uh, a tool called Localize was used for the translations. Um, why is that a benefit for, our, I guess, our partners? Um, so there's multiple benefits to it. One is that we can... Uh, easily add additional languages yeah. and we can also do that in a collaborative approach so if we say have a partner or a customer who is interested in adding a specific language to it they can contribute to the translations can help proofreading yeah uh, yeah contribute improvements and all that sorts of stuff in a very easy way okay. um, i can imagine that'd be really useful for things like the place like the nordics and things like that exactly, where the yeah. languages are quite quite different to and obviously for us it would be difficult to judge whether so, that yeah, yeah certain certain terms are the right ones in, in, in those languages so yeah okay and is there any in the pipeline that are coming soon uh we're looking into danish uh and swedish i think so uh, at the moment um excellent in the pipe. Look, looking forward to seeing those um so one of the one of the big things and i think probably the most visible new things last week um that our, our existing customers will notice is the ui got a bit of a refresh ah, exactly yeah. uh, a little bit more than just a refresh i guess um but could you tell us a bit more about the thinking that went into the new ui design Sure. So uh, the whole new UI design is based on a principle called atomic design, okay, uh, which breaks down uh, every uh, basically the whole UI into single atoms, which, for example, is a button or a drop down, and things like that. And all of them have been thoroughly redesigned and 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 uh, relooked into from a user experience perspective. Okay. Um, and that basically gives us a toolbox to build very clean and easy to use uh, user interfaces which look the same basically across okay all so the it gives us that consistency platform. across all the pages the elements and exactly, all that yeah. sort of stuff oh that's cool okay and uh, I, I like that buzzword the atomic that's, yeah, that's great isn't like it? <laughs> bits that you can just add up to build your own layout it sounds like a, a lego brick that's really cool um so the third in the list and I, this is the one i'm personally most excited about is the parameter based routing um so with, it's, it's a little bit of a technical name uh, so perhaps we'll, we'll break it down a little bit. Now, I've been playing with it a little bit in the lab already. 
Uh, and I've allowed just, you to do that. <laughs> yeah, I just you keep me away from the, mm. the production stuff, but uh, yeah. gotta I'm, have words there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so in the lab, I built uh, an example use case where we pulled in, for example, the department of the caller for an internal one, and that works really well because you don't need to do anything, right? It just Nimbus knows the Active Directory attributes and pulls things like department and job title in, and with that, I was able to route to the right you know, service desk or, or things like that. But I feel like I'm scratching the surface here. So perhaps you could tell me uh, what, what I'm missing that could be even cooler. Yeah, so where the whole power of it comes in, and yeah, <laughs> if you use the word power, um, <laughs> is the integration with Power Automate or Microsoft Flow, as uh, a lot of people know it. Okay. Um, so that means that it basically lets us integrate routing decisions with all sorts of external systems. Right. So uh, you can pull in data from your CRM system or from a spreadsheet, right? As easy as that uh, to make routing decisions. We, uh, we built quite cool use cases for customers where um, one was a simple spreadsheet where they say, okay, if a customer from that company calls in, uh, route to the specific uh, sales team. Okay. Or um, if a customer has an open order, route to, the, route to the order management team or even to the delivery guy who's uh, currently delivering your washing machine. All right, so a, a lot of that stuff um, is interesting because in in the days gone by, we would rely on typically on database integrations to do things like yeah. that, which is obviously quite powerful. Um, but in terms of keeping it up to date, there needs to be various integrations to get there. But it sounds like this really gives us the ability to have normal end users, maybe non-technical people, able to maintain certain bits of information in, in a way that they understand and things like that. Exactly, yes. So yeah, that can be, as I said, as simple as a spreadsheet or yeah. a SharePoint list. Right, so you can easily go in there and change stuff which, which you need to. Um, customers are using it also, for example, for blacklisting or grey listing callers. They don't uh, they don't want in their contact centers, which okay. is a thing, right? That's actually so, quite interesting. Um, and that's just being driven out of Excel for that customer. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, I've, I heard something really interesting recently. That Excel is actually the most common programming language in the world. Programming language. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's <laughs> because of you know VBA yeah, and the uh, formulas yeah. and things, and yeah. most normal people can figure their way around it. So I really like that we're bringing that capability in and allowing that to sort of um, be used more widely in the customer services. That's fantastic. So um, great. Okay, so so we've got the the new languages, uh, and just to be clear, that the new language set that's that's only for the user facing or agent facing side of the the interfaces, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. We deliberately only introduced that on the end user face, uh, end user facing um, user interface because that's what people interact with on a daily basis. That's what people use very frequently. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've uh, decided against translating the administrative backend uh, for a simple reason that it's very easier to find stuff in our knowledge base when it comes around uh, configuring call flows, for example, and stuff like that. Oh, okay, because saves if, confusion, I guess. Exactly, right? because yeah. if, the, if the element in the call flow is named exactly the same as in the knowledge base, it's way easier to find it. Absolutely. Uh, and hence, we, we decided to, to leave the administrative backend in, the, uh, in English. Brilliant, okay. And uh, I guess one final question before we move on to some uh, sneak peeks. Um, is there any license constraints around any of these things? Um, well, I wouldn't call it a constraint, but uh, the parameter-based routing, Yep. That feature comes for our customers which, uh, uh, who have an enterprise license. Okay. So oh, yeah. um, if customers don't have that license, want to use that feature, it's very easy to upgrade the license. So just speak to their account manager okay. uh, and they'll get that, uh, they'll get that on the way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a part of our enterprise routing because we, we find it's a very powerful enterprise feature yeah, and, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and hence that goes into that licensing. And, and, and of course, everybody gets the benefit of the new languages, the new design, and it's just Absolutely. part of being in the cloud and the new stuff just happens. It's right? cool stuff around, uh, yeah, about yeah. it, right? And it's available as of um, the 7th of May. So it's so already it's in already there. there. Really you can cool. already use it. And yeah, customers will have seen it because, for example, the language automatically adjusts to your uh, to your client language. So if you have a German client, then your uh, language in English uh, <laughs> language in Nimbus automatically switches to uh, oh, to your client cool. language. It's those those little thoughtful details, I think, that uh, that separates things. Cool. Okay. So so that's all stuff that's there today, and that's uh, things that our customers already can benefit from. Um, but we can give a little sneak peek of a, a couple of things that are in the pipeline today, right? Yes, we can. So uh, one pretty cool thing is um, interaction history, uh, which is coming very soon. So in the next uh, yeah, one to two weeks, we will see that uh, coming onto the Nimbus platform, uh, which 
gives the uh, gives the end user a, a comprehensive view of their interaction history. So okay. all the calls they've accepted, also calls they didn't accept. Uh, so basically, gives you an overview over over your whole day what was going on. Gives you an easy way to call back users. So it's basically a, sim a single click to to make a call to uh, okay. to um, to someone who called you. And could you go do things like uh, if you forgot to record the task completion codes or things like that? Exactly. That so it will it will flag it for you. You will see it on the user interface. There's a little exclamation mark saying, "Oh, there's some information missing." So you can easily go back in there and and uh, do your codes and tagging and all that sorts of stuff, which currently isn't possible because you have the session only as as long as the uh, as long as the call is ongoing. Yeah. And when can we expect to see that? I mean, it's the it's the twelfth of May today. So when are we thinking? In the next one to two weeks. Obviously, we're okay. working on a on an agile basis. Uh, it's currently in testing. Um, as soon as that's done, we'll push it to the platform. So it might even be available already by the time people listen to this. <sighs> yeah, looking forward to that. Okay, <laughs> and I understand that it, the last one is probably uh, really technical, um, <laughs> but you know, I, I think it's quite cool. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about the the script that's coming up? Sure. So, um, as um, most Nimbus users will know, we have the provisioning script, which um, helps us uh, creating the um, application instances within the customer environment mm -hmm. and the resource accounts which are needed to route phone numbers and uh, SIP addresses to, to Nimbus services. Yep. Um, and that script has been heavily improved uh, based on user feedback we got in the, in the last three months. Okay. I'd say we've onboarded about 150 uh, customers and got various feedback, especially when it comes to um, um, using the script in an enterprise environment, right? Be yeah. it the use of proxies or bulk uh, editing yeah. services. Um, and things like license assignments. And things license like that, assignments, right? uh, using hybrid environments, for example, which was a... Uh, yeah, which was a bit of a cumbersome process before, but it's now really slick and easy um, to be handled via the script. Yeah. Okay, and, and and when can we expect that? Is that on a similar sort of timeline? That's on a similar sort of timeline as okay. the uh, interaction history. Yeah. Brilliant. Really looking forward to that one. It's going to make uh, onboarding a lot easier, particularly for our partners that onboard uh, customers directly or even our self-install customers. Uh, really cool to see. So um, great stuff. Well, uh, that's that's pretty much it today for our first episode of The Melting Pot. Well, I don't know. Is it? Because we wanted to show our, we, should, we wanted to show our audience a little bit about our, about our software, right? Especially ah, the parameter-based routing you're so excited about. So I think we should do a demo. Give a little sneak peek, shouldn't we? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and stick a, a demo over the top of the uh, the video then, uh, and give everyone a view as to what that looks like and some example use cases, uh, and you can see for yourself. So through the power of editing, here we are with a, a quick demo or a video run through of the parameter dependent routing that we spoke about earlier in the show. Uh, this really is one of my favorite features of this new release. Uh, makes it really easy to make routing decisions uh, based on what we call parameters, but you can think of those as nuggets of information about the caller. Um, so I'm gonna give you a really simple use case and I'm gonna show you how to reroute the calls between services based on the probable language that they're going to, to, to want to talk to you in. And in this case, I've got a, a German service, but if there's any international callers, then I want to move those to a different service where they're primarily English speaking, so we can handle those international calls a bit easier. So over in Nimbus, we can see that uh, we've got our workflow all ready to go. I click on edit. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove that, uh, that connection there. I'm going to drop my parameter dependent routing in place or check parameter as we as we call it in the system. And as I mentioned up front, uh, what I want to do here is I want to transfer those calls if they're non-German speaking. So I'm going to think ahead and just place that transfer element in and pre-configure that for me. So it sends those calls to my help desk demo in this case. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to expand the check parameter elements and I'm going to configure these checks up front. So firstly, we need to choose which kind of parameter we want to use. Now, there's two or three types of parameters that you can have. Um, you can have custom parameters or you can have Nimbus ones. Uh, with custom parameters, there's a few different types in there. And these are primarily data points or, as I said, nuggets of information that you can bring in from Power Automate. And you can do that based on any of those uh, weird and wonderful integrations that you might have there. So it could be ranging from th something like Salesforce through to a spreadsheet in Excel online, all the way over to uh, you know, I don't know Google Drive or Google Docs and things like that, if you uh, if you so wished. 
Now, just for this use case, uh, the beauty of it is that within the out of the box parameters in Nimbus, we do already have exactly what we need. So Nimbus gives you a whole bunch of really useful parameters out of the box, and you don't need to do anything extra to get access to these. Now, what you can see is we've got some interesting uh, fields like the display name, the email address, the job department, job title, etc. And if the caller is an internal caller, then you can automatically get that information populated by the system because it just grabs that from the Active Directory um, lookups. Uh, of course, you can also populate these data fields with Power Automate as well. So again, you can use that um, you know, CRM integration to, to populate these fields if you so wish. And for my use case, uh, I want to check to see whether the inbound caller uh, has a phone number that starts with a plus four nine. So I'm going to choose caller plus tell number. And then I'm going to expand the checks part of the element. I'm going to say this one is DE callers. And then we very simply just need to put in our regex. Now the regex is quite simple. Uh, you just need to use a, a pretty simple regex where you just get a match or a no match, a true, not true, etc. So I'm just going to go ahead and configure that with a very simple plus four nine uh, expression. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could of course add more of these checks so you can regex out various different types. So I could, for example, put the Swiss dialing code and the Austrian dialing code as well, for example. So all those German speaking countries. And I'm just going to collapse that element again. And here now we can see with the exits, we've got no match, we've got not set and we've got German callers. So clearly the German callers, we're going to leave inside the queue and we're going to queue them right here. But if they're an international caller, that would mean that they don't match any of those regex checks. And we're going to go ahead and move that to the transfer. Save our workflow changes and we're good to go. Now, if a caller dials in from a plus four nine, a German phone number, they will get queued for a German speaking agent. Whereas if they're from any other country or any other dial code or even anonymous, in fact, they will get routed over to the uh, the international service. So it was a really brief run through. Uh, I hope that um, it kind of made sense if you're listening to the audio only. Um, I do suggest that you try and come to the website and have a look at the video so you get the full benefit of that. And uh, I'll send you back to the main show. Thanks for uh, thanks for sticking with me. All right. So uh, with that, I hope you uh, hope you saw something interesting in the demo there. Um, and this time it really is it for for the first episode of the melting pot. Unless Alex, you've got anything else you want to cover? I'm shutting up. <laughs> all right so uh so as i said i'm james and i'm alex and thanks for listening uh if you want to uh, hear any more about our software or our solutions and of course you can go to luo.com and see uh, everything you need there this was the melting pot mm -hmm.